are Gay and Robert. Five years ago, we quit our jobs, sold our house and all of our possessions and began living the dream of traveling the world with only backpacks on our backs. After flying over 300,000 miles and visiting 82 countries, COVID brought us to a screeching halt. True to our fashion, we improvised and bought a brand new van and built it out in just six weeks to explore the United States until international travel opens up. Hey guys, we should let you know where we are currently at. Battery's dead, so we'll have to figure out uh, another solution. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed, people! Hey guys, we should let you know where we are currently at. I'm sitting in the Minneapolis airport, which we do a lot of airport sitting, which we love, but uh, for three hours until we hit um, a plane to Seattle. Once we get to Seattle then, we are gonna jump in our van and we are gonna head over to Blaine, Washington where we've had our boat stored there and we haven't been on our boat for the last two years so who knows what condition it's gonna be in. Yeah, we'll take the boat to uh, State Park and clean it and get the engines running and uh, just make sure everything's okay before we hit the water. And we're gonna launch it probably Memorial Day weekend and we will head out towards the San Juan Islands, hopefully see some orca whales and get back on the ocean. It's been way too long, so we will see you in Seattle. Right now we just landed in the Seattle airport and we are going to go collect our bags. We usually don't carry bags with us that we have to check through, but we did this time. And Delta just in, sent us an email. What did the email say? Uh, it said that uh, our bags went on an earlier flight, so we have to go pick them up at a Delta baggage office, so now we gotta figure out where that is. <laughs> Why is it that we have extra bags? We usually only carry the one uh, backpack with us that just has our belongings. Well, we have a bike rack and <laughs> projects and a bunch of stuff that we wanted to bring for the van, so in the boat. <laughs> so now we're searching for the Delta airline office to find our bags. There's a van right where we left it. So we just arrived to the van and we jumped in and we are ready to roll. However, Bob? <laughs> Battery's dead, so we we'll have to figure out uh, another solution. <laughs> We'd have to hook uh, some coat hanger and something together and jump the battery. Trickle charger is on, so that will start. Start charging the battery, but I don't know how long that's going to take. It might take a while. I think it's only one amp an hour type of thing. So, One amp an hour, what does that mean? Two hours? Four know. hours? Yeah. All day? Do we have to get a hotel? Well, it's it turns over. Yeah. dead all right. Hmm. can tell on my phone how much battery there is. So the battery's at 10.6 volts, which is obviously too low. But one thing I can do is connect the power back here um, to, to uh, boost it from, because we have 500 amp hour lithium batteries, so that will boost the, uh, the starting battery, but they're isolated. Well, the one thing I do know, I have the most confidence in you to be able to figure this out. Uh, the last resort would be to have somebody come and jump us, but um, I know you are so good at uh, MacGyvering things and 
getting the battery to work. Somehow it got flipped off of storage mode and then it slowly drains with the uh, um, alarm system and stuff like that. So not a big deal. I mean, we have tons of power right here. I just need to get it to that battery and it's starting to go now. I can also pull one of these wires off it connects the batteries together um, and that'll also work. The only bummer is I burned one of these up when uh, I had the wires touching accidentally. So this this cable here, or this one here I guess it is, runs directly to the uh, starting battery. This one runs through this circuit breaker to the house batteries. So by putting those together, that should obviously have a direct connect. Oh, so you can see that it's going up so already. Yeah, so it's 12.6, it was just at 10. Okay. So now those batteries are together. Now it'll be interesting to see if I can do a truck start. So just having those on, you can potentially just start the engine. Well, we'll see if it has enough juice to Keep your fingers crossed! Oh! So the problem was, when I went to start it, it's pulling more than 40 amps from uh, the bat or the house battery, so I need to kick this. So it blew the circuit breaker? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Keep your fingers crossed, people! It's going to blow that circuit breaker, which is fine. But does it have enough power? Oh! No way! <laughs> wow. There we go. Bob the master. <laughs> nice. Yes! That's much cheaper than calling somebody, that's for sure. That worked. Crazy. <laughs> so you just have to scan a barcode in? Yeah. It's not working. <laughs> Cheapers. Step three. Step two, scan your barcode is what it says. If not, proceed to step three, make your payment. I believe we have a parton.com uh, confirmation code and the scanner is not picking up the uh, barcode. Did you also pull a ticket when you entered or no? Yeah. Can you please scan the ticket first and then scan the reservation? No, I did that. So I, What's your name? Uh, Robert Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R. Is the gate up? Uh, no. Oh, now it is. Thank you. Okay. All right, have a good day. We are out and on our way, finally. No, it didn't take that long. That was a really short, actually. Well, it was $430 without going through park on com so it saved uh, quite a bit of money it was a good experience to be able to know how to jump that you can macgyver anything <laughs> let me tell you so today is not been the most perfect day but we always roll with it we have had many hiccups uh, today along the way so starting off with the first one which was what uh, we ended up uh, ordering a taxi the, or the hotel did and we stayed out by the airport just in case the taxi didn't show up well the taxi didn't show up so the, the person at the front desk uh, was kind enough to take us to the airport then. And then the second thing was we ended up checking our bags because they needed more room on the airplane, which and we, we never, never do should. that. So the backpacks then ended up coming in a flight before us, which turned out to be no problem, but we got an email saying, hey, you come to some office to pick up your backpacks, which it all worked out. But. So that was a success. But then we showed up for the van and the batteries didn't work. And so thankfully Bob is a king of MacGyvering. So that started up without any problem. Then we couldn't get out of the parking lot of where we were um, parking the van, but. Well, and in that situation, we paid $190 to park there for, I don't know, 30 days or whatever it was. And well, when we checked out, if we would have just done normal, it would have been $430. So anyway, it worked fine. They, they took care 
care of it. But I hope that's it for these glitches the, yeah. along the way, unless I'm missing one. No, we're to the campground now, so oh. <laughs> we'll see if they have our site available. <laughs> yeah, we haven't checked in for the evening, Otherwise, so we'll stay at the wayside. So Keep your fingers good. crossed. We think we're in. We haven't um, gotten there yet. <laughs> maybe there'll be somebody in our site. <laughs> so we'll see what the site is. Uh, spent a lot of time looking on Google Earth to figure out which one to go to. Because um, we're going to pull the boat in here. And the boat is 13 foot tall. And so we want to be able to get in. But you know, some of these fifth wheels are that size already. So we should be good. But also I didn't want it to just be you know, uh, covered. So we'll see. And here's our camping location for the next four days. I think we've been in this area before, but as soon as I stepped out and took a picture of the bay there, I realized that we've stayed in, in a parking lot down there a couple times with our uh, motorhome that we had. We might have stayed here once the first time we came out with Aaron and before we took it the boat to Vancouver okay. on its own bottom to see Alex so but we took it to Alaska on its own bottom um, and then left it up there for a year or two and then brought it back down here but for the most it's always been the Pacific Northwest yeah even though we boarded all over the Great Lakes and loved that this is just so easy it Good morning everybody. We're currently at Birch Bay in Washington and we decided that we wanted to give you a better glimpse into our daily life because our, our life is very unique compared to other travelers. Yeah, we are not just van lifers, uh, full-time RVers, international nomads. We like the variety so it's hard to show that in one video a week. And so doing a daily video will show you the uniqueness that we live because today we are actually in our van but we just came from New York City. We are going to head on over and get our boat and we're going to be in our boat for the next two weeks. But we got a ton coming up in the next month here. Yeah and we have some overlanding trips to do. We're flying to Germany, we're flying to Alaska. Um, so we'll do the van, the boat, Airbnbs. So. We are looking forward to letting you guys get a glimpse into our daily lives and hopefully you have a better understanding on how it is that we live. Next up, uncovering the boat, cleaning it up, and launching it to the San Juan Islands. There she is! We are at the New York City Airport. We're and not. <laughs> We no. did it better last no. time. No. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we, we have a lot of variety in our... <laughs> that didn't work. 